Today we are going to talk about a very difficult subject, difficult in a sense to mean that um, it is something that has not been understood by many believers and today we want to trust him who has given us salvation to reveal himself to the church this morning. Amen. So I will be talking about a topic I'm calling the uniqueness of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can rise up on your feet as we take the reading. And the reading that we are going to have is not uh, specifically where I will preach from, but it's just an example of how Jesus has been uh, demonstrated or presented as a unique person, as a, as a powerful a person as a powerful God in scripture. So turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 5, from verse number 1 to verse number 11. Revelation 5, verse 1 to verse number 11. And I would like for us to read together. Uh, I don't know the last time you read the book of Revelation, and so today I want to give you an opportunity if you are like me, we love the Psalms, we love Isaiah, we love John, we love these other interesting books. But they are difficult books that we never set our eyes on. And one of them is the book of Revelation because it has so many signs, it has so many things that are not understood. So it will be my pleasure to, to ask you to read alongside me and together we'll go all the way to verse number 11. One, two, three, go. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. And I began to weep loudly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing as though it has been slain with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. And now, church, I just want you to just go before the Lord and pray that Jesus, who is unique, the one that we are presenting this morning, the one that is speaking to us, will reveal himself to your life this morning. Whether you have a relationship with him or you do not have, may he reveal himself to you. Just go before him and pray this morning that, Jesus, I want to know you this morning. Jesus, I want to know your salvation this morning. Jesus, I want to know your power this morning. Jesus, I want to know your kingdom this morning. I pray that even as you reveal yourself to us this morning, we shall have a closer, a better, and even a firm relationship with you. I pray that you reveal yourself more than ever before to the church of Jesus Christ this morning. I pray that Jesus you shall reveal your power and your saving grace to the church this morning that we shall not confuse you with any other Jesus, with any other Christ that has been pre presented to us, that we shall not confuse you with any other power that has been released to the world that we live in today. I pray, Jehovah God, this morning that you reveal your son this morning. There has been 
confusion in the church of today. There has been confusion in the era that we are living in about many Christ, about many saviors, about a lot of messages that come in the form and shape of the word of God. But today, as we sit in your presence, I pray that you may speak to us. The uniqueness of Jesus. How do we know him? How do we know him? How do we discern the power that has been given to him? So, Father, bless your people this morning. And bless me, your servant, even as I stand here, so that you may use me. Speak through these lips of clay and make your glories known to the church this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We may take our seats in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You all look blessed and indeed you are. It is a beautiful day this morning to stand and sit in the presence of the Lord to dine at the table of the King. Amen. In the recent past, we've been uh, experiencing the, the floods and a lot of rains and cold and all that. But today is a beautiful day. Amen. I felt that it is a better place just to appreciate the Lord, even for giving us good weather, for holding the rains, and even for removing the floods that have claimed many lives. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. So like I said earlier, I will not specifically preach from Revelation chapter 5, but that is a place that is so unique in scripture that I felt we can present uh, and read together and see the power of Jesus Christ. He is unique. Hallelujah. And he's not only unique, he's the savior of the world. Hallelujah. In the morning, we received a very powerful message, and I want to draw your attention to the YouTube channel uh, and to the Facebook page and just revisit. Listen keenly, and you will hear the message that God gave us gloriously this morning through his, uh, his servant we seated here. But this time, I just want to spend uh, the few minutes that I have just to share about Jesus Christ. He is the savior of the world. And this is a scenario in the book of Revelation in chapter number five after John had received a vision uh, from Jesus Christ himself and has been told to write the things that are found in the book of Revelation. He begins to write second chapter, third chapter to the churches uh, that are there, the seven churches. And after that, then he is taken up in a vision and he's shown the kingdom of God. He's shown a lot of things in chapter number four that I, will, I, I, I do not want to get, to get into the throne of heaven. And he's seeing wonderful things that he had never seen before. Remember, this is the, G, the John who had walked with Jesus. John the Revelator is the same author who has authored the book of John, the gospel according to John. He is the, 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 the apostle of Jesus Christ. He is the beloved of Christ. But it takes a time and a season in your work with the Lord that you have to step up. Mm. Do I have a witness in the house this morning? I tell you, it is one thing to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ. It is one thing to walk with Jesus from the streets of Jerusalem and Galilee. But it is another thing to be taken up and to be shown visions and things that you cannot see with the physical eye. John had seen Jesus raise the dead. John had seen Jesus being baptized. John had seen a lot of things. God, and I mean Jesus performing miracles. But it came to a time and a season that Jesus wanted to show him great things that the physical eye cannot see. And I tell you, believers, it, it has come to a time and a season for the church of Jesus Christ to step up, Amen. to step up in our faith and to begin to see things that, are, that cannot be physically seen. Let me tell you, our eyes are limited. But when Jesus takes you to the realms of the spirit, then you begin to see things that a normal eye cannot see. 
Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to tell the church this morning, unless you see Jesus from the spiritual realm, then you cannot know him. We are living in an era and a season where many Jesuses have been presented to us. We are living in that time when many Christs have been presented to us. We are living in an era where the word of God has been presented to us in different versions. And we have other words that have been presented to us, clothed in the clothes of the gospel and with the shoes of the gospel. But when you get into the realms of the spirit, you are able to discern and know that this is not the living word of God. Hallelujah. That's the reason why I am laboring here before you this morning to even attempt. I am, I am a student of the Lord Jesus Christ and I am attempting to even present the little things that I have known about Christ. But I am asking him, who is the owner of the church, to present himself to you and to make himself known to you Amen. this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have heard about Jesus. How many of us have heard about Jesus? Oh, I can see. That everyone, everyone in this congregation, and I believe even the ones who are following us, you must have heard something. And actually not something. We have heard a lot about Jesus. We have heard that he is the son of God. We have heard that he is the one who came to save us. We have heard that he opened the blind eyes. We have heard that he is the one who died and resurrected. And we know this morning that he is seated at the right hand side of the father. And we know again that he left us with a promise and said, I am going to my father and I am going to prepare a mansion. Hallelujah. A mansion for you. And after that, I shall come back. And I will pick you so that where I am, oh my goodness, what a promise church this morning. So that where Jesus is, Joyce shall be there also. You can't be with a man like Jesus unless you know him. Unless you have the understanding of who he is. So we are waiting for the second advent of Jesus Christ which will begin with the rapture and I believe on this pulpit we shall talk about the return of Jesus Christ so that the church can clothe herself with garments of salvation with garments of righteousness with garments of glory because he's coming for a church without spot and even wrinkle Praise the name of the Lord. And so as we wait for the rapture, and as we wait for his reign, which will end up in the restoration of the first intention of God to make the earth a habitable place. Praise the Lord. Amen. You remember the word of God in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 pro, 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 uh, gives us an understanding of a paradise. And because of sin in chapter number three of Genesis, we lost the paradise. And what was supposed to be a blessing to us became a curse. But Jesus in Revelation 21 and 22, he's coming to restore the paradise. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have read Genesis chapter one and two and Revelation chapter 21 and 22? They are the same. The rule of Christ shall be restored in the fullness of time, in the second advent of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is the time that the church firms up our relationship with him. I tell you, it is not business as usual. It is the time to really prepare ourselves and clothe ourselves with garments of righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. As the church, we know him and we have believed him. 
But I tell you, even as the church, some of us have, have not even known him. We have not known him in his entirety. We don't know Jesus. It is the time to seek the scriptures to know him. I tell you, the world has celebrated Jesus. I tell you, all over the world, December 25th, the world comes to a standstill to celebrate the birthday of a man they have not known. But we are supposed to be different from those ones. We celebrate the birthday of a king that we have known and have a relationship with. We must say like with Paul that I know whom I have believed in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Second Timothy chapter number one verse 12. And so this morning, we know our Jesus. I want to pray that by the end of the few minutes I have, you shall know him. And of course, you will not know fully. There are so many things that the Father will continue to reveal through the written word so that you can say like Paul, I know whom I have believed in. And I have a persuasion in my spirit that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him. And that is my life. Amen. I have committed my life to a Christ that I know. Amen. So, what is your responsibility as a church? Your responsibility is to present a Christ that you know. Actually, the Christ to a world that so desperately need him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. I may not really, I have uh, a lot of scriptures to share with us. I am preaching from a topical sermon. Uh, and, and therefore, I will not do an exposition on any of the verses that I have written here. So I will move from this place to this place to just give you an understanding, an enlightenment on who Christ is. You know, the uniqueness of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 is the first gospel pronunciation in the entire Bible. In the beginning from Genesis chapter 1, God created, God made man, God married man. But in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 is what we call proto-evangelium. The first pronouncement of the good news of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. I am paraphrasing so that we can move with the time. And I tell you for truth that this is the first time the gospel has been pronounced in scripture. And it is not talking about the seeds of a woman. It is talking about the seed of a woman. And that seed is none other than Jesus Christ, the savior of the world. He is pronounced as the seed of the woman who shall come and, and, and fight the enemy who had brought enmity even between God and man and destroyed the relationship that man had with God. There is only one man that can bring unity, reconciliation, redemption for man. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible continues to speak about this man who is Jesus Christ. And I want to tell you, church, that man's triumph over sin, it is only through Jesus Christ who is the savior of the world. The sin that came to the world could not be taken away by anybody else or anything else. So the first uniqueness that we see in Christ is that he is the one that the prophets talked about. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that many of us have been born and many of serious servants of God have been born. But there is no one who bears a witness 
of prophecy like the son of God. He was prophesied. Even at the fall in Genesis 3.15, he was prophesied to be the seed of a woman who shall crush the head of the serpent. That is the Jesus we are talking about. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the earth, John said. And he is the promised Emmanuel, God with us, that has been promised in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7 and chapter 9. I will not get into that. But his name shall be called Emmanuel. Even his name had been prophesied. Hallelujah. I don't know how many of us have their names prophesied, you know, in such a huge way that the Bible pays attention to this kind of man that is going to be presented to the world. No wonder Matthew and Luke committed an entire chapter to bring the genealogy of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because they are presenting a different man. To the, to, to the Jews, to the people who have heard him and have believed in him. He is the savior that was promised from the root of David. You know, David was told that in your throne there shall never lack a man to lead. That was Jesus. He is the one that was prophesied. His coming was prophesied a hundred years before his birth, the world was waiting for a savior, a man that was going to be sacrificed to take away the sin of the world. His lineage was prophesied. He shall come from David. His nature was prophesied that he is not going to be conceived as an ordinary child. But by the power of the Spirit, his place of birth, that in Bethlehem of Judah, he shall be born. Uniqueness of Christ. The Bible prophesies about where he would be raised, his career, his purpose on earth, the nature of his death, and even his resurrection. That is the Jesus that we are talking about this morning. Unlike, unlike some religions, Christianity is founded on who Jesus is. In my class, we, were, we, we are going through a course that we call Islam. And, you know, we, 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 we are looking at how some of these things came into existence and many, many religions of the earth, of the world today. And sometimes you hear about the things that they have believed in, that somebody had something, you know, something was dropped on somebody through a prophet. And that has not been tested. You know, Jesus has been prophesied about, he has proved and I want to tell you, there are so many prophets that have existed on the face of the earth, but none of them died and resurrected like our Lord Jesus Christ. As much as we put our faith on what God has said in the scriptures, our faith is more seriously rooted on the man who has given us the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. So, we are founded on Christ. And he is the one who accomplished everything. By the way, the Jesus that I am talking about is the one who was involved in the creation. God said, let there be. He was using the word. And John brings us to the place of understanding that this word was with God. This word was God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the Jesus that we are talking about and preaching about. Praise the name of the Lord. The second uniqueness of Jesus is about his birth. There is no man, there is no prophet in the entire universe that was born by God in the womb of a woman. Akuna, they are risen. Tell your neighbor they are risen. 
Even the famous prophets, apostles, and great men, even Abraham, they are recent. It is only Jesus who was born by a woman, but he was God. He was planted in the womb of Mary. Hallelujah. It is the power of God that rested upon Mary. Even Mary didn't know these things, I tell you. She didn't know. She asked, how will these things be? Since I know no man. It was nothing about physical union. It was everything to do with divine union. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Divine power of the Lord Jesus. You can find that in Luke chapter 2. He is not God that indwelt a man. Please don't get this wrong. He is not God who indwelt man. He is the God-man savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he entered into the womb of Mary for nine months. Sat there and was delivered in a manger. We were having a discussion yesterday uh, as, as we were coming from Kitui to bury our sister and we were saying some of us <laughs> were born in places and in ways that you cannot think about. We were not born in Agakan. Personally, I was not born in Agakan. I was not born in uh, uh, Nairobi Hospital, Mombasa Hospital, or any other hospital. I was born in the house. <laughs> in a manger. <laughs> you know, where... <laughs> Let me not get into that. Let me tell you, God has had mercy. This Jesus that we are presenting to you has had mercy on us. These things you call germs never invested in our bodies. We were born in terrible places. In fact, I remember when I was feeling for my birth certificate, because it's not like the children of today where us, the parents, have the responsibility of filling your birth certificate. You grow until you have every tooth. And then you are required by the government to have a birth certificate. So you take yourself there. And I remember one of the questions was, which hospital were you born in? I said, hospital? Who, you know, and then put down the name of the midwife who delivered you. I imagine the name of the midwife who delivered me has a very funny name. I couldn't put that in my, in my birth certificate. I had to look for an English word and I usually laugh about it. I just put it there. The government doesn't know the English name. So, you know, Jesus was born in a terrible manner. In fact, his was worse than mine. Mine was in the house. His was in a manger where the cattle were in that dam. And he was born in such a manner so that he can minister to the least in the community. Jesus was not born for the kings and the movers of the, and the shakers of Kenya. He was born for every person who puts their faith in him. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I wonder if he was going to take a birth certificate, what he would write. But that is Jesus who came, God from heaven. All the glories of heaven he left, and he saw you, written in sin, Suffering in the world, suffering in sin. And he said, I am leaving this glory. I will go to that manger. I will be born by a woman. I will be delivered in the shed. He is Jesus, the savior of the world. His nature and his life was unique. He was delivered in that manger. He was able to bypass the curse of sin and qualified as the sinless lamb of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, he was born in that manner to die for our sins. There is no animal that could be sacrificed, especially to take away my sins. My sins were grievous. Before the Lord, there was no animal that could bear my sin. It took the sinless lamb of God. 
to take that sin away. And therefore, it qualified Jesus to be the sinless lamb of God who could take away that sin away. It, you know, it took Jesus. It took his power to satisfy the wrath of God so that God can look at me and accept me. Hallelujah. He was both the lamb. That means he is the animal that, you know, the, the old sacrificial system had the sacrificial lamb that was without sin or blemish that carried the sin of Israel. But Jesus was both the lamb because every sinner, your sins were carried on the body of Christ. And he was also the lion. Jesus is both a lamb and a lion. A lamb to go to the cross and get sacrificed. And a lion because he is reigning on the throne of his father. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He's, he is the one who went to that cross of Calvary. He carried that power. He is the one that was prophesied. His nature, the third thing, the third uniqueness of Christ is that he was both God and man. There is no prophet in the world that was both God and man. I am laboring here to convince you to believe in Christ. He is unique. He is the savior of the world. There is no other. And if there is any other doctrine that is presented to you, you should be able to discern it and to say no to it because you know the truth about our Christ. He was 100% divine or God. And he was 100% human. He was man. As God did, he also created every living thing that you see. Hallelujah. Amen. As man, he came as a substitute to die for man's sin. We needed a man where the nails can be driven through. We needed a man to hang on that cross. We needed a man to carry the beatings. We needed that man. He became the substitute. You are the one who was supposed to go to the cross. But he came to go to the cross on your behalf. Hallelujah. In the new covenant, a sinless son of God needed to come on the face of the earth. So that he can carry that sin. He is the only one that qualified in that space. God came in humanity and poured himself out through Jesus Christ and took away the wrath of God concerning humanity. By the way, Jesus is the omnipresent God. He is the omniscient God. And he is the omnipotent God. He is God. He carries power and authority and dominion. And that's why even when they took him to the cross, he still carried the power. Amen. He was all powerful, omnipotent. You know, he was all powerful. And that's why the thieves who were sacrificed with him, one of them had the advantage. I tell you, friends of God, pastor was telling us and teaching us in the morning about prayer about relying on God, about not giving up in prayer until you see an answer. I tell you, friends, if you are sacrificed, thank God that you are sacrificed besides the Son of God. Amen. Jesus is with you in your suffering. In that cross that you are carrying, Jesus is beside you. And who knows, he will save you right there. The man looked at Christ and had a communication with God. Many of us have missed an opportunity, especially when we are on the cross. You begin to think about the cross. You begin to think about the death that is going to take place 
in the next few minutes and you become blind to the presence of the glory of God that is there. Many of us have not seen the greatness of our God. We have only seen trouble. Pastor was telling us, and I loved it because, I, in fact, I almost thought that he was preaching about me because, <laughs> yes. Sometimes we come here, he was saying that, let me emphasize now that he said. Some of us come here and we are praying for you, laying hands on you to get jobs, to get cars, to get all this, to get healing. And you still leave the church with your backache. As a pastor, we, that, I think that's why Elder was telling you people to pray for us. We pray for you, you come here, you give us testimonies. Vile buwana metenda. Yani na ukwa moyo wako, unasema na buwana kama ulimutendea, na ni mimi nilimuambia, si hata na mimi tu, unikumbuke, you know. And, and therefore, even as we pray for you, pray for us. We carry the same burdens, the same body, the same problems like everyone else. And we need the visitation of the Lord. And so Jesus carried the sin and became a substitute. But Jesus is also powerful. When you're going through what you're going through, check around. Jesus is there. Jesus is present where you are. When your career, when your place of work is giving you lemons, check out for Jesus. He's right there. Seeking to find out who is standing for the truth that I may reward him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is present everywhere. Hallelujah. And he is all knowing. Amen. He is omniscient. Amen. He knows everything that you are going through. I tell you the pastor may not understand you. The elder may not even understand the depths of your trouble. But I tell you, there is a Jesus. The one that I am presenting this morning. He is the one who knows the depths. Now just see to give angua mwezi kuona alama, tu mebeba alama. But we are carrying them with Christ because he's standing right beside us. And he's helping us to walk. He's helping us to walk. Praise the Lord. The third, the fourth thing is his life. I will go through this very fast so that I conclude. Second service is very tricky. He spoke with wisdom. Jesus never opened, and that is one thing I've been asking God about. Some of us, today is Mother's Day. Is it Mother's Day or Women's Day? What is it? Whatever it is that deals with women. And you know, as women, we are gifted. We can talk. I tell you, you need only Jesus to help you to sense and even to know what to say. Sangini, unasema vitu unachapwa because you have said the wrong thing. We need Jesus to help us, ladies. The men are saying, Amen. Kwani, are you fed up with us? You know, no. Just the same way Jesus was unique, women are also unique. So pray for us also to have a touch of his uniqueness in terms of even wisdom of words. Jesus loved uniquely. Who else can stand and die? For their enemy. I hear believers in the church, not in our church. You, you are born again. I have checked and I have confirmed. But I have been in the presence of some other believers who kill their enemies in the church. Catch fire, melt, and die. That was not Jesus. Jesus was unique. He said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. You believe who is saying that the Bible says suffer not a witch to live. Do you have the likeness and the image of Christ in you who said forgive them? That's why I tell you the season of grace is more demanding than the season of the law. 
If we were living in the time of Moses, we would have killed all of you. In fact, wewe kama umejipata kanisani, count yourself lucky that Moses is not your pastor. <laughs> Unge kufa wewe. I tell you, it is God who has brought us here by his grace and suffered you which to come to the saving knowledge of our Lord. That's why Jesus is unique. He has called everyone, the witch, the adulterer, the sinner. And even for some of us who speak many things, he has called all of us and saved us by grace. Otherwise, the earth would have opened and swallowed us alive. I tell you, we are living in the time of grace. And it is more demanding than that time. You are supposed to love your enemy. You are not supposed to kill them. Praise the Lord and give them food to eat. He taught with absolute wisdom, skill, and complete knowledge. Let me tell you, in the teachings of Jesus, even the dumb was able to hear and understand. There is nobody who sat in the congregation of Jesus and didn't understand. Hakuna, he was the best teacher. And some of the teachers we have here, like Pastor Shikuku, you need a touch of the teaching grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that when that pupil comes to you misbehaving, you don't hit them and tear off their skin. You bring them closer to you and help them and drive in the knowledge and the wisdom into that child. We need, a, we need to learn a lot from this Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. He reasoned with the great philosophers of the time. And no wisdom of any philosopher would beat the wisdom of Jesus Christ. He sat with the scribes and the teachers of the law and they wondered and marveled, what kind of a man is this? Uniqueness of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. His works and words are incomparable with any other words and works of any other king that has lived on the face of the earth. His miracles were not imagined. They were evident. Everyone who saw what Jesus did confirmed that he is unique. Amen. He met a man who was blind from birth in chapter 9 of John and touched him. You know, he made uh, some sputum, mixed it with mud and applied it to his eyes. And everyone knew that the man was seen. And that is um, another sermon for another day. He has been helping me a lot. His death and resurrection. His death had been prophesied and happened exactly the same way that it had been prophesied. He died not because he was a sinner, but because he was the solution for the sinner's problems. Praise the name of the Lord. He didn't die because he committed any sin against his father. He died to give us a solution. His death didn't lead us into mourning. I tell you, death is painful. But it led us to victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Uniqueness of Jesus. He died to bear our sins on that cross. Not out of age. Jesus died, didn't die because he was a muse. No, he was very young, 33 years. He was a very young man. He, he didn't die because he was sick. He was the solution for every health issue. He was not sick. He offered himself to die for your wickedness, your sin, and your weakness. That is Jesus. Nature confirmed him not to be as an, an ordinary man. But a powerful man. I tell you on that cross he saved. And even as he went down to the grave. He saved. He resurrected some people. Amen. They only waited for him to come out. And be confirmed. 
as reason so that they can come out because he was the firstborn of resurrection. Amen. That is Jesus. There was, he, at his death, for three hours, there was darkness, uniqueness of Christ. I don't know how many of us, when we are dying, the whole world witnesses our death. Kila mtu ako kwa giza kwa sababu Joyce anakufa. Hakuna. It is the uniqueness of Christ that brought the darkness. Many of us will die. And even when we are being buried, there is no resurrection that will take place upon other dead people. But the uniqueness of Christ as his burial, many came forward and they appeared in Galilee. They were seen walking. Hallelujah. That is the uniqueness of Christ. Amen. And that's why you must belong, belong to him and believe in him. Amen. The third day he resurrected as he was prophesied, and he lives forever, unless Akina John. You know, John in John, uh, uh, Lazarus, sorry, in John 11. He was resurrected in a powerful way. The stone was rolled away. He came out, the grave clothes were removed, but John died again. When Jesus resurrected, he never died again. The proof of his resurrection was seen. He was physically seen. And that made him the sinless lamp of God. His achievements, as I close, no one rich man has been able to save humanity from his sinfulness. No wise man has been able to save humanity from his lostness. No amount of sacrifice can save humanity. No writings and claims of holy books can save humanity from sin. Jesus didn't own property. We were going through uh, that, that, that course I was telling you about. I don't want to really amplify it. And we realized that when their leader died, they were busy looking for who from his family was going to inherit. Let me tell you, when Jesus died, nobody looked for his family to inherit the kingdom. Amen. Yani like next of kin of Jesus to inherit everything that he had, there was nobody. It has happened in other religions. They have been looking for somebody to inherit what their leader had. <laughs> they have been looking for somebody to inherit the position that he took. Jesus never, never in fact, he gave the heritage to you and to myself, black people. He didn't give it to Mary or whoever, the brothers. He never. He gave it to everybody so that whatsoever, black, yellow, white, and blue, whoever believes in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So that is the Jesus. And he is coming to reign again. Jesus is coming to reign again. Are you ready? His kingdom is here. And not yet here. A theological debate. Because it was evidenced by his coming. And what he has done. But it will find its fulfillment. When he comes the second time. Praise the Lord. He alone can transform lives. No one is qualified to transform anyone's life. He was the only one who could open the seven sealed book in the book of Revelation chapter 5. The book that contained the story of mankind losing, you know, his lordship over Satan. He is the only one. John looked and there was nobody who was worthy to open the book. But then the angel taps him and tells him, worry not anymore. Do not weep again. There is the Lamb of God. He is worthy to open the seals of the book. And I tell you, that is the Jesus that we have believed in. Believed in. He's not only unique, more importantly, he's the Savior. So what? 
Now that we have talked about the uniqueness of Jesus, so what? If you have never known him, now you know. If you have never believed in him, now is the time. He's coming again, not as a savior, but as a judge. And so you better be make yourself ready. There is no legislation. There is no election. There is no political appointment that can satisfy the ache in our hearts for true righteousness and justice. I tell you, if you have ever sought justice, you will confirm there isn't. But there is Jesus who is the just God. He is the judge. The time is now to change and amend your ways. The grace of salvation is still flowing and calling out to anyone who would choose and decide to make Jesus the Lord of his life. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the earth and gives us eternity with the Father. You can rise up on your feet as we think about the uniqueness of Christ.